Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to this online dialogue titled, What Are You Hungry For? This is part of the ongoing exhibition, Hungry Design at the National Design Centre, which is curated and presented by Top Awards Asia, supported by the Design Singapore Council and the National Design Centre. Exhibition is designed by Farm and branding done by Roots. Today's dialogue consists of mainly three portions. We will be starting off with a short sharing by each of our panelists, where they will be talking about the exhibited works. Following that, we will proceed with a panel discussion before ending off with a Q&A segment where the panel will be taking questions from you, the audience. Moderating today's session is Mr. Henry Ho, President and Creative Director at GTDI, a multinational design firm based in Tokyo. With us today on the panel, we have Aisuke Tachikawa, Design Strategist and CEO of NoSigner. Eriko Kawakami, Art Director and Graphic Designer. Shun Kawakami, Branding and Art Director at Atlas Inc. Joshua Breidenbach, Founding Partner and Executive Creative Director at RICE, a Vietnam-based brand consultancy. Jonathan Yuan, Founder and Creative Director of Roots, an independent interdisciplinary design studio based in Singapore. Last but not least, Director and Co-Founder of Cross-Disciplinary Design Practice, Farm, Selwyn Lowe. You can find out more about our panel members later on during their sharing, as well as on the Design Singapore Council website under the Events tab. Let us now welcome our panel members for today's dialogue session. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello, Henry. Hi, Hi everybody. Hi. Hi, hello. Hi, thanks Hi. for joining. Great. First up, we have Aisuke Tachikawa, Design Strategist and CEO of NoSigner. Tachikawa-san, please. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, uh, please, uh, please excuse me for proceeding in Japanese. Uh, please turn on the translation. こんにちは。あの、ノザイナというデザイン事務所やってる立川です。横浜をベースにしています。あの、ま、今回パッケージングのデザインのエキシビションなんですけど、普段はあのプロダクトの開発もすれば空間のデザインもすればいろいろな、
でそこのパッケージをリブランディングするにあたってあこれがちょっとそのパッケージの一部なんですけど真ん中のこの、えー、チキンナゲットなんですけどよく見るとですねこの、えー、グリーンに入っているところこれ下半分全部があの食品の内容物ですイングリディアンスですね。これが、えー、要するにこう非常に内容表示をめちゃくちゃでかくするっていうブランディングをしていてであのこのブランディングによってかなり売り上げが伸びたというふうに聞いていますであの、えー、あの山口県の山並みって非常に低くて長いなだらかな感じなんですけどあれパッケージを並べるとこうなだらかな山がつながるようになってます、えー、と次のプロジェクトはですねあの富山県の博物館のリノベーションとえー、ここにケーキ屋さんを作ったっていう、えー、プロジェクトをですね、この空間デザインも僕らがやっていたりします、まあ、リノベーションなんですけど、えー、あのここはですね本当にあのすごい田舎にある駅から徒歩15分の博物館なんで、人が全然来なかったんですけど、でもあの、このプロジェクトによって、なんとこの博物館の入館者数が3倍になりました、あの以前から比べてで。これがその木になるっていう、えー、ケーキ屋さんのブランディングなんですけど、この時はですね、えーあのケーキごと発明するっていうことをやっていてちょっと次のページ行くと分かりやすいんですけどかなり特殊なケーキのデザインを開発しましたでどういうデザインかっていうとですねあのもうあの木になるって、まあ、日本語だとこう木になるフルーツっていう意味にも取れるんですけど,、えー、あのどうこれケーキなんですよこれどう見ても果物にしか見えないんですけど実はこの果物の中にクリームが見えないように入ってるんですだからこれもう完全に外見,外見あの果物なんだけど中身がフルーツっていうものをやったらこれあの、えー、非常にツイッターでバズりましてですねあの瞬間最大風速かもしれませんけど日本で一番バズってるケーキ屋さんにこれはなりました。であのまあ、そういうこともあってですね非常に人気の場所にその富山県大津ではなっているということです。で次のプロジェクト、これあの、今回展示でも、えー、出させてもらってるんですけど、おやつタイムスっていうプロジェクトで、これは JR 東日本っていうあの大きな鉄道会社と一緒に作ったプロジェクトです。あのこれはですね、ちょっと特殊なプロジェクトで、これあの、実はですね、JR は一個も工場をこのために作ってもいなければ、OEM をさせた、あの別にこう大きなところに OEM してなくて、日本中にある。小さなお菓子屋さんにこの袋だけを配るんですね。で、この袋に普段そのお菓子屋さんが作ってるお菓子を入れてもらう。で、えー、それをこう高速バスの発着場に持っていくと、JR があのそれを首都圏まで無料で運んで、で、えー、それをこうあの首都圏で売りさばくっていうのをやってて、今50商品ぐらい出てます。あの表面がそのだからお菓子屋さんの情報になってて、裏面がそのあたりの地域の情報になってて、新聞のようなパッケージのデザインになってるっていう。ものですだからおやつタイムスっていうんですけど、まあ、そういうプロジェクトです。えー、と次がですねちょうどあのスタートアップヘルプすることもあってそうソーシャルなでそんな中でこう日本酒の、えー、産業のスタートアップをどうやってヘルプするかってプロジェクトをちょっと手伝っててであの広島県にですね、えー、三角島っていうあの広島県の海があるんですけどそこのにあるすげえ小さい島ですねそこにオーガニックのレモン畑を作っている。えー、会社でもあるんですけど、直来さんっていう会社がいて、えー、でですね、えー、そこと一緒に、これ実は日本酒なんですけど、えーまあ、そこんな風にですね、えー、日本酒にちょっと見えない、レモンの味がついてるスパークリングの日本酒なんですけど、まあ、どう見てもレモンの皮みたいに見えるっていうものを作っています。あのレモンの皮のデコボコをスキャンして、えー、それを貼ってるんですけど、これ実はこのシールを剥がして、もう一回組み立て直すとレモンの形になる。要するに、レモンの皮の形そのままのものを貼ってあるボトルになってます。でそこと一緒にですね、あの最近、その日本にはこうお酒がまあ大きくは2種類あるんですよね。一つがあの酒、えー、あの醸造酒、もう一つが焼酎、これは蒸留酒です。でこれは蒸留酒なんですけど、第三のお酒というか、全くそれとは違う方法を発明したお酒で、あの加熱しないで蒸留することによって、日本酒の味がめちゃくちゃ残ってるあの蒸留酒を作った、蒸酎というプロジェクトなんですけど、でそれをこうあの、えーまあ、作ったものです。ハングリーデザインということもあって、えー、ちょっと食品のパッケージじゃないんですけど、ちょっと別のプロジェクトも紹介しようかなと思ってて、あのこれはですねあの、日本のトラディショナルなエプロン、前掛けを、えー、あの
、まあ、リブランディングするっていうプロジェクトをやってたことがあってですね。で、えー、あのそれの時に、えーまあ、まさにこれはのその昔の、えートヨ,タのえー、トヨタって昔は車屋さんじゃなくて、あの折り木屋さんだったんですよねで、そのトヨタの食器をまだ唯一使っている会社さんなんですけど、そこのためにこういうパッケージをデザインしました、あのエプロンのパッケージって、あのまあ、エプロンひら広げてみないと、どのエプロンかわからないから、売りにくかったんですけど、こういう足,足がこう入ってて、ミニチュアになるようにうまくパッケージデザインを作ったら、ですねこれであのその前掛け屋さん、売り上げが3倍に伸びて、ですね今、世界中でこの前掛けは、買うことができますシンガポールでもどこかで売ってたりするかもしれません。でですね、次がですね、これあの山本山ってご存知かわかんないんですけど、一応こう多分シンガポールでも売ってると思います。えー、あの、えー、日本のあの日本茶というか緑茶をですね、あの世界で初めて作った330年ぐらいの、えー、長く続いてる老舗のリブランディングを我々手掛けていて、でそこのためのパッケージングとか、えー、あのプロジェクト手掛けてるんですが。日本は昔、江戸時代っていう時代があって、あのその時のいろいろなこう文字とか、えー、デザインのテイストとかをそのままこう学び直して引き継ぐ、だから新しいものを作るというよりは、江戸時にどうやったら回帰できるのか、戻せるのかということを考えて作った、その山本山のリブランディングのパッケージングのデザインです。でこれはごく一部で、ですねもっとすごいたくさんいっぱいパッケージがあるんですけど、まあ、いろんなパッケージを一緒にデザインしています。うんまあ、だからこうある意味では日本茶の文化をどういうふうに未来に残すかってプロジェクトですね。であのですね、日本はあの東日本大震災っていう大きな災害をですね、2011年の3月を覚えてらっしゃる方もいると思うんですけど、経験しました。あの世界で最大の被害額を出した非常に大きな災害だったんですね。であの我々防災のプロジェクトをたくさん手掛けていて、えー、それこそあの日本、まあ、世界でも最大級の防災プロジェクト、東京防災というのを我々がやってたりするんですけど、まあ、電通さんと一緒にやってたりするんですけど、これも電通さんと一緒にやったですね、あのこれ実は食品のプロジェクトで、あのとあの備蓄食をどれだけ美味しく、えー、あの素敵にできるのかっていう、えー、プロジェクトで、これはのセブンイレブンさん。と一緒にえー、あのセブンイレブンと電通と一緒にやったというものですね。で、あのまあいろいろトライアルを、えー、しているっていう感じだったんですけど、まああの、えー、コンビニエンスストアの本のコーナーで売れるようにですね、本に似せたようなパッケージングにしていました。うんまあ、とにかくですね、えー、パッケージング、えー、もいろいろやるんですけど、僕はなデザインにすごくこうあの世の中を、えー、触発する力があるというふうに信じて仕事をしているという立場なので、あ,のあらゆるプロジェクトで、えー、必ずどういう社会的意義とそれが結びつくのかっていうことと、あと、まあ、それでどんだけマシンになるのかと、未来が。ということを目指してデザインをしているという、えーまあ、つもりなのでですね、よかったらあのデザイナーで検索してみていただくと、今日の、えー、プ,レゼンプロジェクトは全部このウェブサイトに載っています。ありがとうございました。Thank you, Tachikawa さん。Next up, we have Eriko Kawakami, Art Director and Graphic Designer. Kawakami さん、please. あこんにちは、川上です。よろしくお願いします。えっ、ー、と日本東京でアートディレクターをしています。えー、ブランドをブランディングをメインにあのパッケージデザインだったりグラフィックデザインあとブックデザインなどもえっ、ー、と作っていきます。まずはじめに今回の展示作品からちょっと紹介します。えっ、ー、とこれは。えー調味料キットのパッケージデザインなんですけど、香川県にある神社のお土産屋さんからの依頼で商品を作りました。でそこの神社は、あのこう後ろに見えると思うんですけど、海の中にあるあの山のてっぺんにある神社でこう、漁業関係者たちをこう山の上から見守っている存在として、あの毎年参拝に、えー、漁師さんたちが訪れるんですけどそこの人たちと何か商品をできないかっていうことで地域の素材を使用して、えー、ドレッシングキットを作りました。こ
これは、えー、香川県の瀬戸内海で商品を考えるにあたって、まあ、ポイントは美味しそうと感じるということを一番にデザインしていますで素材をできるだけ見せたいと思ってあの液体のドレッシングではなくてそのままこう素材がそのまま見えた方が一番こう味のしずるが出るのかなと思うあの瓶に素材をそのまま入れてキットとして家であの実際ドレッシングを作ってもらうっていうような形で販売しましたで箱のパッケージにはこれは自宅で作るとこうなりますけど箱のパッケージには海から見たその神社のある山が描かれてます商品名をこう表に大きく、えー、文字をデザインしてかまるでこう魚市場のような活気のある雰囲気でデザインしていますで色は青一色に絞ってパッと見てこう海のお土産屋さんあ海のお土産らしさみたいなものを目指して作っていきます、えー、っと次に紹介するのがこれまでの仕事ですえー、っとこれはチョコレートのパッケージなんですけど、えー、っと日本の老舗チョコレートメーカーから誕生した、えー、比較的若い層をターゲットにしたブランドですグルメリーと言いますでチョコレートを食べるなんか幸せな時間とか空間とかそういうことをイメージしながらデザインしています。えー、と箱のこう表面にはモノクロの景色が描かれていて、こ中を開けると色の草花が出てくるっていうようなデザインで、こうチョコレートにたどり着くまでの時間を意識して作っています。開けていくたびに驚きがあるワクワクみたいなところをあの気にしながら作って。で、えー、次に紹介するのが、えー、お茶屋さんのブランディングです。えー、静岡にある製茶問屋から。誕生したお茶の魅力を再発見してもらうために作られたブランド、えー、取材していく中であの、まあ、何種類ものお茶を飲んだんですけど味がどれもほとんど分からなくて<笑>違いが分からなくてなんかこうすごい数をブレンドしてお茶ってあのブレンドして売られてるっていうのを聞いてあの一つ一つの農家さんのこう、まあ、バランスがいいっていうよりかは個性的なお茶っていうのを集めてそれを商品として売ろうっていうところからスタートしましたあのウイスキーでいうシングルモルトみたいな感じで毎年同じ味の茶葉を作るっていうのがすごい難しいらしくてなんかなので市場に出回らないって聞いたんですけどこれはまあ逆に今年限りの茶葉とかコンスタントに別に売っていくっていうよりかはお茶の味の違いを楽しんでもらおうっていうようなブランドですこれがパッケージですパッケージにはあの農家の特徴とか、まあえー、とその茶葉が作られる背景地域の特徴とかっていうのをラベルで表現してベースの,あの緑の箱には、えー、お茶の美味しさを引き出すお茶の入れ方ど、えー、何グラムで何度で、えー、どのぐらい待つとあの美味しいお茶が入れられるという入れ方をデザインとして施しました。次がこれが6つの農家がセットになった飲み比べセットです。これはお菓子の箱
まあ、ここはお店作りとかあの何を売っていくかっていうところからあの携わってたんですけどお,お茶を美味しく飲んでもらうっていうところを中心にパッケージだったり空間とか。これはスタッフの方が説明しやすいようなある意味プレゼンボード的なあの壁になっていてそういうようなところを作ってきました、まあ、あのどの仕事にも言えることなんですけど、まあ、何かこうパッケージデザインだけを作るっていうよりかは人が感じることを想像しながらなんかその人がこう感じるっていうのをたどっていく道みたいなものを考えながら。えー、とデザインしていますで次は、えー、パッケージではないですけど、えー、これは、えー、と去年の年間日本のデザイン日本のグラフィックデザイナー協会が出版している年間のウッドデザインとグラフィックデザインですこれもさっきのチョコレートのパッケージと結構近い考えなんですけど外箱がありそこからこうビビットなオレンジが出てきてで本にたどり着くっていうようなページを開くまでの時間こう期待を膨らませてくれるようなものにしたいと思ってデザインしましたはい以上です Thank you Kawakami さん Next up we have Shun Kawakami Branding and Art Director at Atlas Inc Kawakami さん please Um, hi,、uh, this is Shun Kawakami. I'm founder of Artless Inc., c r e a t i v director and branding director. Also,、uh, my assistant designer Thomas he joined this webinar for helping language, you know, my English t e r r i b l e So, Thomas, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, good. So, my company name is Artless. Artless is an independently global branding consultancy and design firm. We conduct all creativity and design based in Tokyo,、uh, branching Osaka, Kyoto, and Karizawa. So, we design almost everything,、uh, include verbal, identities, brand vision,、uh, philosophy, strategy, and brand identity,、uh, logo, graphics, sign, web,、uh, digital app, and technology. And also consulting for the service and hospitality, fashion, music. Um, that's kind of a、uh, brand atmosphere. And also、um, design direction for architecture, interior,、uh, landscape design. So, you know,、um, we conduct all creativity and design. So,、um, first, this design、uh, product is played in this exhibition.、Uh, this package is designed for、uh, Hotel Satoyama Jujo. Uh, it's in Niigata, Japan. This is、uh, Japan honey,、uh, a little bit、uh, very organic and natural honey. So, this design concept and purpose is、uh, bilingual communication for global market because this hotel,、uh, so many, well, I should say, so many、uh, global people and o v e r s e a s So, we try to make creating Japan atmosphere and also global atmosphere and bilingual communication. So,、um, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking about broadening the、uh, possibility for brand. So, this hotel now, now this hotel is on Michelin Star Hotel and Singapore Good Design Awards and a group of design hotels.、So. And next,、um, next hotel project is in China.、Uh, this is a very、uh, rare place、uh, in China because this place can't get onsen. What should I say onsen in English? Onsen is hot spring? Thomas. Yeah, like a hot spring.、Right. Hot、yeah. spring, okay. So this place is a hot spring place, but you know,、uh, Chinese people i s not popular.、Uh, Onsen resort and hot spring resort. But this owner l o v e onsen in Japan.、Uh, t h e y coming to Japan so many times for onsen retreat. 
So they want to make um, hot spring resort in China. It's a kind of maybe only one, uh, only one hot spring resort in China. So yeah. this product owner is Chinese and architecture and runs there by Bangkok designer team, um, development architecture. And also, uh, so uh, branding by my company. So my company is based in Japan, um, but I'm trying to get global project. So this project, uh, our work scope is uh, logo, graphics, and signage, and packaging, um, almost everything uh, without design and interior. And try to, we could try to uh, use Tordinga language, Japanese. Uh, this time is don't use Japanese, uh, English and Chinese. And this project in Shibuya, uh, this is uh, Hotel Koe Tokyo. Uh, this hotel project concept is in, uh, to bring back fashion and the music culture in Shibuya. So Shibuya is a very um, young city. Uh, for young city, but but now a uh, little bit boring city, Shibuya. Now. So we try to bring back the, uh, high quality fashion and music culture and design to new experience in culture. So we also design signage, um, signage on floors, uh, some place, and also amenity design. We design. And next is uh, uh, my cafe. This is my cafe in Nakameguro, um, Tokyo. I'm, well, just, I'm a kind of owner for this cafe. And これ, office no tonal ni aru tonal ki. Office to ishou ni aru tonal ki. Yeah, this, this cafe is uh, located next to our office. It's in the same building connected oh, yeah. to it. Yeah. So, this project, I was trying to combine Japanese traditional and also new coffee trend, third wave coffee culture. Design, so design looks like um, international, but you know, um, items is very traditional Japanese items we are using. Yeah. So and next is a um, koe pizza. This is a pizza uh, dining out in the park in Okayama Prefecture. So this is this brand to make new culture and lifestyle, and for new generation of family in Okayama City, um, Okayama Castle outside. So summer is very good, but winter is so cold, really difficult to winter time, but we are trying to um, new experience outside of restaurant. This is small uh, kind of kitchen and signage and graphics. And this is a drinking car. Drink car. Um, Sometime move to the other park um, for the event. Um, pizza and packages, almost everything. And also collaborating with uh, US like uh, Yu Nagaba. He's very popular now. Um, one of the most famous US like in Japan now. So try to get um, young customers there. Our family and the kids. So next one, uh, this is donuts um, store and plant. Uh, interior design by Ken Kuma. Uh, he's one of master uh, Japanese architect. So we collaborate um, Ken Kuma's uh, traditional Japan, um, contemporary Japan interior design. Uh, try to combine a uh, little bit feeling. American diner and donuts like this and packaging. 
So uh, my company, uh, this is my company top page. Uh, you could see our statement. Um, we design, create uh, sustainable business and culture through the Sakya branding and design. So Sakya branding means almost the same meaning of um, Sakya economy. It's important thing. This is uh, Sakya branding. Uh, it's my image. So combine to uh, vision, uh, sustainability, and business to make new business and culture. So uh, my design uh, looks in the Japanese aesthetics with a global perspective to create new value and innovation to uh, for a new era. Okay, almost finished. Thank you. Thank you, Kawakami-san. Next up, we have Joshua Breidenbach, Founding Partner, Executive Creative Director at RICE. Joshua, please. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a real honor to be here. Uh, thank you to all the organizers and the other speakers. Um, so my company uh, creates a brand strategy and visual identity primarily and often we get the opportunity to work on packaging. The packaging is a, an incredibly exciting area to be working in and I'm very happy to discuss a few of our packaging solutions today. Um, we look at packaging as sculpture, something that we can immediately give to our clients' audiences that they can touch and feel uh, and that makes it an incredible communicator. Uh, we're very lucky to um, get to work on packaging for our clients because sometimes um, clients may not have something as tangible as that. It's a huge opportunity. Um, you can go to the next page. And we believe that things that are made and traded, next page, these are kind of in sequence, are windows into cultures. Uh, they can amplify voices and broadcast extraordinary stories. And on the next page, our studio cannot talk about packaging without talking about this project of ours. Uh, it's for a company called Maru Chocolate. We did this nearly 10 years ago, and it was our studio's first opportunity to create something like this in Vietnam as we were based in Vietnam. Um, this company uh, is today still crafting uh, Vietnamese cacao into a really exceptional um, world-class product. And this package has been um, kind of a little delivery device um, sent out all over the world um, to tell people something about, about Vietnam and of course about chocolate. On the next page, uh, when we met them, we were introduced to this story, this, and we were um, immediately aware of the opportunity we had to, to tell this extraordinary story through design of, um, of a rare um, and exquisite raw material, which was being crafted, hunted down and, and crafted by craftsmen into something really um, special. Next page, please. Um, through the history of this company, we've been able to work on um, many products for them. And I, I wanted to talk about one specific one because I, I think it's been um, of interest to the, um, the organizers. And this was, um, a newer product coming out of Maru Chocolate, which was called Provisions Maru. And on the next page, uh, we can see that it's really uh, focused in on just the basic raw materials. So uh, two of these products actually come from the process of making chocolate. Uh, one is just the cracked uh, cacao bean, and one is um, cacao powder, which someone might use to make hot chocolate or something, but that's a byproduct of making cocoa butter. And uh, the other product is a, is a chocolate spread. And what's really exceptional about the product is it carries all of these flavors that are quite unique to Vietnamese chocolate. 
Next stage, please. Um, for us, this was kind of maybe the first opportunity to focus in and portray something that's really true to the brand, which is going out into the field and doing something very simple uh, from the earth. And that brought us to a design solution, which was not only um, quite sustainable on the next page, but also talks about uh, just simplicity and actually being out in nature. We wanted to evoke ideas of, of sort of camping and something that's um, a very um, almost nostalgic sort of uh, provision that would be um, shelved in, in, in somebody's uh, cupboard. But this uh, kind of rough and tumble can was something that um, we, uh, we worked very closely with the client to produce, uh, which would be hopefully something that somebody would hang on to uh, and therefore be a little bit more um, sustainable. The next page. Uh, this is a completely different project now. This is a product coming out of Japan. This is um, a, a team of young people who were creating um, a new matcha brand and they wanted to portray matcha not in a really traditional sense but in, in a very contemporary sense. And uh, what we were inspired by here, the story that we found so inspiring was the, the material itself, matcha, which is very, very, very pure uh, and sort of un, unadulterated, like just pure leaf. And uh, we helped them name this company. Um, we, we all agreed that this idea of just pure material was kind of the, uh, the inspiration behind everything. And on the next page, um, this is actually a, the final solution of the packaging. Um, you can see how we're kind of trying to tell the story of material by just uh, punctuating the material itself. And the, the outer package, the outer box, uh, we're using different types of material paper to say different things about the matcha material inside, which is three different roasts and blends, uh, just using um, embossing. And on the next page, uh, we're taking that a bit further. Uh, the product came with a, a recycled ceramic uh, vessel, which also has this um, the logo coming out of the material. And the matcha itself is housed in mylar, which we wanted to bring in as a contrasting material, something very rough, something very raw, a bit traditional, and something very uh, futuristic like mylar, uh, talking about material in a different way. And on the next page, <clears throat> we also included a little instruction zine, which was uh, produced uh, with um, vintage uh, photocopy machines. So you have raw kind of um, black toner as another material. So we want to sort of um, introduce many different kinds of materials to the user as they get closer and closer to the actual material we're talking about, which is pure matcha. So the whole thing is an experience in the material. Next page, please. That's uh, just a page of the interior. So uh, we simply used um, green paper to talk about the matcha and printed black uh, thermal toner with the Xerox on top. It's a nice effect. Um, another project which uh, wanted to tell a story of, of work, of simplicity, of pride, and this is a Vietnamese beer. Uh, this is a Vietnamese craft beer which wanted to not present itself like, um, like a very high-end craft beer, but rather a craft beer for everyone, kind of a craft beer for, for every day. And on the next page, we see our inspiration here. We um, helped rename this company as Rooster Beers. And the rooster um, has a quite strong meaning in Vietnam. A simple creature, companion, simple, hardworking, every day. 
And we also combine that with this sort of um, typographic vernacular of, of work of, of, of um, uh, these are um, coming from uh, work shirts, uh, work trucks, and uh, simple sort of typographic forms that have happened around this idea of work. Um, on the next page is the, the beer um, series of cans which hopefully everyone's enjoying um, after work and not during work, but um, it's really all about just emphasizing that, that simplicity and um, straightforwardness of, um, of a really well-made, very well-crafted, but simple um, and accessible beer. And on the next couple pages are just a few more images. And on the next page, I think the cans look really nice crushed. Um, something completely different. Uh, this is also in collaboration with Maru Chocolate. We were asked to collaborate with, with them and a Vietnam-based um, uh, fashion brand called Karem. And Karem is becoming renowned for this specific um, silhouette, um, this really beautifully crafted uh, dress um, and uh, it's made by hand uh, using uh, techniques that are um, traditional in the making of traditional Vietnamese ao yai, which is the traditional Vietnamese uh, dress. And this company is very much about craft and things being handmade. And on the next page, you can see a little bit of our research uh, coming together photographically uh, covering um, both things that are coming from this uh, handcrafted um, uh, clothing company and also ingredients of Maru chocolate. And Karem's initiative was to bring more flavors in. Um, they're very inspired by nature and uh, they wanted to bring new flavors from Vietnam into this Vietnamese chocolate, one being tamarind and the other being coconut. Um, our solution um, was quite simply on the next page um, to work directly with the creative director of uh, Karen. He's the designer of all of the clothing that this company puts out. And he essentially collaborated with us to create um, a pattern for a dress that we then um, envisioned in paper. And we brought that together to sort of capture the spirit of the, of the clothing. Next page, we can see a little bit more how that came together um, to create a really unique um, unwrapping situation and to tease that um, very uh, alluring gold uh, wrapper underneath. Next page is just a, another detail of that. Okay, uh, next page, please. Um, this is a different project. This is a, it's a company in Vietnam called Four Peas. Um, and it started with a pizza, a pizza restaurant called Pizza for Peace. And the founders, uh, Masako and Sane, uh, hired us to help them with their brand architecture and their brand strategy and their overall visual identity. And that's a very, very big project that I will not show today. But I want to talk about something that we created together to get to know each other. We simply created a wine label for them, which we envisioned as a sort of um, a story, a pictorial story of their origin story. Uh, this couple began making uh, pizza parties in their backyard in Tokyo. Um, they moved to Ho Chi Minh City for another type of work, but ended up opening this pizza restaurant, which was all about happiness and making uh, pizza, sharing that with people. And we depicted that story on this wine label for them. And it was essentially our part of our research phase of getting to know them well. On the next page, you can see the bottles. When they rotate around, you sort of get this never-ending uh, and beautiful story, which would send the message to um, the customer about sort of the, the background of the brand and uh, the background of the restaurant they would be sitting in. Uh, next page, please. So. Uh, I wanted to keep that as brief as possible, but um, when asked uh, 
what am I hungry for? I think, uh, you know, design is an opportunity to make change, to make something better, to make something more meaningful. And uh, as designers, we're all really lucky to partake in that situation of, of making change. And ultimately, um, on my final slide, uh, I think what we can always remember is that um, design, whether it's uh, something small like a package, uh, is actually a vehicle to, to envision uh, a better future. It can make an impact in someone's life. It can tell a wonderful story. It can broadcast something from uh, a misunderstood place. Okay. Thank you. That's all for, for now. Thank you, Joshua. Next up, we have a pair from right here in Singapore. Jonathan Yuan, Creative Director at Roots, as well as Selwyn Lo, Director at Farm. Over to you. Charlotte. Thanks, Charlotte. Hi, everyone. Um, we are live in the National Design Centre. We have loved to have everybody here today. But uh, uh, we thought we'll show you the exhibition. I think Jonathan will start this session first. Hi. Hi, um, my name is Jonathan. So um, I'm really, uh, it's a pleasure to share, share these sessions with uh, everyone. Uh, it's okay, son. Soon good to see you again. Erico, Joshua, Henry, and everyone is attending this session. So um, just a quick start. Uh, my name is Jonathan. So I run a studio called Roots uh, based in Singapore. Uh, we do um, branding, graphic designs, uh, packaging designs, uh, prints, to exhibition designs and you know and book designs and all sorts. So um just kind of coincide with these teams, you know, as a studio, what are we hungry for? Um I just kind of have a long thought and to keep to put it simple is that we you know we always try to tell stories through design with timeless idea in a contemporary visual sensibility. That just kind of run through with all the works that we have done so far. Um, for the purpose of these sessions, which is regarding emotive designs and packaging. So I just kind of briefly pick three projects to share with you uh, on our creative process, how we came to think uh, in terms of how we solve the, the, the design brief uh, with the aspect of uh, emotive designs and, and also how to retell uh, the stories of our clients. Coloco, uh, Coco Loco, uh, it's a local uh, pure producer of a pure organic raw coconut water. So previously they have uh, their product Coco Loco so with the packaging and everything, but um, they actually came to us to kind of like engage us to take a fresh look and how can we help them to rebrand and better communicate their story. So basically they are one of the few, uh, I would say probably the only one in Singapore that do high pressure processing of coconut water. So in the sense that yeah, the coconut water that they kind of like produce is uh, untreated, is really pure and organic. So the one of the reason, one of the aspects of pure untreated coconut water is that it eventually will turn pink in the packaging as time goes by when they are exposed to sunlight. So it actually becomes a kind of an uh, like a like a point where it create like a lot of uh, inquiries from consumers like why is my why is Coco Loco that I bought tempeh is it still okay you know so we actually trying to solve the problem by kind of like um, take the whole packaging but we kind of completely take away all the, the designs and everything colors and everything and uh, we branded the whole thing of course and then keep it as naked as possible we wanted to show that the coconut water the process of it turning pink and in, in 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 the process of that we're trying to educate consumers that by looking at your coconut water tempeh is a marker of that this is a pure organic coconut water that's untreated so the whole packaging is we only use white color in including the nutritional information and all the necessary uh product informations so that the consumer can see through the bottle as much as possible. And there's only one uh, black label set, organic coconut water that kind of make it stand out. So we actually engaged photographer Jovian Lim to help us craft and shoot a series of uh, photography images to kind of communicate this aspect. And we also uh, kind of designed uh, a range of packaging as well. So this is a carton box that using the, typo the logo type and the typography uh, styles 
uh, of Coco Loco that we developed for it. And then, you know, we just keep it simple. And then we also develop a special uh, structures to hold six bottles together. So these are for like, you know, online orders that six pack, then, uh, you know, the delivery people can easily kind of pick and, you know, deliver six bottles at a time. And yeah, so you can see that, you know, the Coco Loco sometimes it can be usually when it's uh, fresh from the factory it will it's a clear bottle for about a week so once uh once uh they exposed to light and so eventually it will turn pink but it doesn't diminish the quality the cocoa, uh, of the coconut water so um the next project uh which is also uh, very interesting in the sense uh is that it's something that um i'm sure is quite uh familiar with uh all the Singaporeans and Malaysians. So what we have here is a delicacy called ota. So ota is basically a fish paste uh, made with fish, fresh fish like mackerel and you know, and the most recent one there's some salmon uh, can taste as well. So all these are wrapped inside of banana leaves and then grilled over a charcoal of uh, fires. And it just kind of like uh, packaged with a toothpick at two ends. So it's a very traditional uh, flavor uh, local delicacies and eat it with uh, either you can eat by itself or eat it with uh, nasi lemak. So um, our client is actually uh, Lily and Brothers. They are one of the uh, local uh, company that famous for nasi lemak and ota. And they came to us to kind of like conceptualize a new brand for a new stores in uh, Changi Airport. So um, we kind of like you know engage uh, like and uh, how to say engage this project with the thought like. You know, we wanted to kind of preserve the traditional spirits of it, but also want to kind of elevate it for a newer generations, uh, younger generations in the sense, and especially in the uh, in airport, so where you have a lot of uh, foreigner tra traveling across. So we wanted to kind of like introduce this uh this uh brand for 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 this delicacy as a local kind of uh, you know it's a local food that is uh that is that is famous for so you can see that this is the 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 look of ota that is most people uh recognize and remember for so basically we just abstract and you know just we just call ota and then we just abstract it in the very simple graphic and we just call ota and then we created a series of motif. Actually, this also kind of reminds people how ota is made. Usually, ota is like there's a lot of uh, the ota kind of uh, tied together over a, a, a open fire and grilling. So this kind of also gives us the idea like how we created a simple motif that true to the spirit of it. So from there, we created the whole series of packagings for for the for the offerings. So um for ota. They not just doing traditional ota, but they kind of push it forward as well, and they use ota as an ingredient to kind of like uh use it in a new way. So they have an ota burger, which is ota as a patty. Then they have ota rolls, and you can see here ota fries. So we also kind of help help them to uh uh coin a new tagline called fresh take on the classics. So ota being the classics. So these are the packagings that we have, like the burger box. So um, we keep it simple. We use the color palettes of the brands, and then um, we, we use a motif. And then this is the nasi lemak um, packaging box. And you might wondering what is all the circle is about. So it's actually uh, the 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 composition of the ingredients. So when you open the box, like the nasi lemak rice, the ikan bilis anchovies the sambals and everything is actually placed in that grid form. So it's kind of give you a pre prelude to the content. And this is the paper bag. And this is also a series of uh, packagings for the ota. So ota, when they, uh, when they kind of like start serving and, and as a takeaway, so we actually need to have all these cut holes at the top to kind of let the steam to go off because they are freshly uh, grilled from, from the fire. So um, like, so we also have like packaging for the ikan bilis with anchovies and anchovies with peanuts, which is a very famous uh, and you know, uh, much loved delicacies here. So this is uh, some quick look in the packaging for the ota. 
and then this is the anchovies and the anchovies peanut. So um, you can see we use the color um, to kind of like uh, kind of like highlights the almost the, the taste of it as well. So apparently it's so successful with uh, consumers that uh, Libby and Brothers actually take this and start selling in you know Libby and Brothers main store as well. You can kind of find it in, in all the Libby and Brothers store. And the last project that I want to share with you, um, this one is not so much about packaging, but more on the emotive designs that um, it's also remain, remain uh, one of my favorite projects that, um, that, that I have the privilege to, to kind of work on. So it's actually, this is an exhibition design that is uh, conceived uh, originally uh, working with RJ Paper. So RJ Paper is a paper merchant locally. So they came to us like um, to collaborate for uh, exhibition, a small exhibition in Singapore. So um, our task is like, what can we do with paper to kind of like um, tell the story about papers in the sense, in the in the simplest sense. So for us, we start to ask ourselves, you know, paper, you know, paper use in design, packaging, you know, books and everything. So it's something that we can see, you can smell. I like to smell books. It's something we can touch. But what about the senses of sound? Um, it's, it's something that people don't talk about. Like, you know, you hear papers, you know, paper sounds. So it kind of make us interest. It kind of raise the interesting questions. Like, can we, you know, have do something about papers and sound? So we, we started have this idea, like, how about we let the paper sing? So we actually start to kind of toy with the idea, like, maybe we can let people kind of feel the touch and play with the paper, paper textures and everything. But at the same time, as if the paper is alive and start making sounds or uh, sing to you. So we work with musicians, we kind of select the papers and stuff like that. And then we started to create a series of sound very specific to different types of paper stock. And then uh, this is a very quick like our exhibition setup space in uh, Singapore. And this is the setup. So it's very clear, very simple. It's just a table with all the different paper stocks, uh, the different paper types and kind of on the, on the glass table. But as uh, uh, viewers or visitors start touching it, it starts to kind of make different kind of sounds. Um, so this is uh, just very quick during the exhibition time, uh, people play with it. And following is a short video that kind of like better explain the, the experience of it. So basically, uh, they are trying to find out how, how we produce the sounds and everything. So uh, it was quite a fun project and, and I think definitely it's kind of suits to uh, uh, the theme of emotive designs because through our observations, we really see that people are, are react to it and they feel surprised, they feel um, like genuinely like uh, react to, to the discovery. I, I leave it to Selvin next. Hi, Ryan. my name is Selvin. Uh, nice to meet all the fellow panelists here and thanks Henry for getting us involved and uh, collaborating with Jonathan on this project. Um, I have no delicious food to show any of you, but uh, I'm more of a spatial designer and I was trying to understand 
maybe sharing a bit more about emotive design and whether from the space component, can we kind of look at social memories or collective memories as a starting point and also materiality. So I'm just going to share two very quick projects before we talk about the actual exhibition design. Um, the first project, both projects are for ESOP, um, the cosmetic brand. So the first project is actually in Kuala Lumpur or Selangor. And um, for those of us in uh, Southeast Asia, I think we're quite familiar with uh, Malaysia. And uh, if you know, Selangor used to be a tin, tin mining town. And uh, we wanted to take that reference of how Selangor used to be a tin mining area and the use of the corrugated tin roofing that you find um, across the landscape on a lot of the old kampong houses. Um, it is very inherent in the vernacular architecture of Malay Malaysia. And we took that as a starting point of how we could use a certain material to form a certain space or to craft a space that relates to the history or to the memories of the location. So we started looking into the opportunity of stacking corrugated metals the entire floor design. So this is uh, Isop in uh, one Utama KL. The space itself is uh, entirely crafted from a cast corrugated metal. Um, the metal itself is also entirely stacked up to form the support structure for all the products. This is the entrance and what you're looking at is the uh, window display as well as the seating area. The entire space is very simple. Um, we use the two ends of the wall to display the products and they are entirely held up by a stack. I, I believe we use almost like 12,000 metal sheets for this uh, space. So uh, it looked uh, very simple. Uh, it was actually very difficult to hold up the entire weight of the metal structure. So something very raw, something very honest, something rooted in the material language uh, and how that can be communicated into the retail store design itself. We use the pattern as well to create this series of uh, stack uh, seatings. And the picture in the middle actually shows how the, uh, if you go to Aesop store, you'll understand a lot of the fragrance are actually kind of kept concealed within the store itself. So that's where the uh, scent will come out from. And uh, on the right hand side, the corrugated language also extends to the facade, where we cast it in concrete. And then we have that whole uh, display bottle what we thought was interesting as well, if you stay in an old kind of uh, atap house or in a corrugated roofing, it's the sound of the rainwater dripping. Um, in every Aesop store, the basin is a very kind of ritualistic moment. Uh, in this store itself, if you actually turn on the tap, I think you start to hear the slight drip sound, which is very different from a, a typical basin. So this is in uh, Wan Utama, um, uh, in Malaysia. The second one is actually in Singapore, Orchard Road. So again, a very different location. In Orchard itself, I think we were looking into the old plantations. For those of us who are familiar, Orchard Road itself used to be a plantation for uh, Gambia, nutmeg, and that was the starting point. Soil and perforated sheets that were used in that plantation. The image here is actually how nutmeg uh, is being dried. So nutmeg and uh, mace, which is the red part in the middle, is actually placed on this series of uh, kind of timber racks in the past where they will put it for about four months and it will slowly dry. It's also on a kind of uh, porous metal sheets where it's used to actually kind of filter the different sizes of nutmeg. Uh, we took our inspiration from this and we wanted to find a way to actually kind of uh, create a quiet space in Orchard. For those of us, uh, I think you're familiar with Orchard, it's a really busy uh, retail area. Whether we can have a calming space in the heart of Orchard and having that kind of uh, story relating to the past of the plantations in Orchard itself. So this is an ion. Um, this is the store where we use a very simple series of material, which is timber and perforated metal, which is the actual kind of drying racks that's being used However, we inverted the relationship between how the, the metal used to be supporting the wood, uh, sorry, the metal used to be uh, where the nutmegs are, but now they're supporting the timber structure. In, a, in the center of the whole store itself is this uh, basin. 
So we actually created this whole uh, perforated metal basin where the water just disappeared into it as if like it's a very kind of a magical moment. Uh, the space entirely is rendered in a kind of cast concrete, uh, alluding to almost like the plantation soil in the, in, uh, in the plantations of the past. So that's another view of the store itself. And this is the sink and how the perforation allows the water to actually drain off magically. And uh, this is just the ending image where we wanted to have that almost like bring back to a plantation the raw tactility uh, of the space itself. So I think materiality and uh, history, collecting memories are important to us when we try to deal with design uh, of emotive nature. Which brings me to the next one, which is about today's show, uh, which we are at right now. Uh, Hungry Design, which is a collection of two dining tables made entirely of cardboard. You want to join? Oh, I'll just, okay. <laughs> I, I think when we were tasked by Henry to look into a possible design for the space itself, uh, packaging, but also in terms of the amount of the material wastage that it, it, it creates, uh, we were thinking of whether there's an ability to kind of use some of this material, salvaged, um, for the show itself. For those of uh, the, the, the foreign guests who are not so familiar, National Design Centre is also in Rocha. Rocha is an area where you see a lot of uh, Garanguni or Kabot collectors, uh, a lot of times elderly. They'll be seen on the street carrying a lot of these Kabots. So we wanted to find a way to actually use the material and potentially also giving back to the uh, to the community within this whole area. So I am showing some images uh, which you have seen and for those who have uh, who are in Singapore, I can I hope that this will actually attract you to come to the show itself. So this is a view of the two dining table made entirely of this corrugated, uh, sorry, made entirely of this uh, cardboard that was salvaged uh, and they were given actually by big retail brands, um, for example Muji, so they actually donated all the cardboards for the show itself, which would have otherwise been thrown away. We have made uh, two big dining tables uh, in the middle of a National Design Center, and of which it sits all the exhibits in the show itself. Let's talk about the venue. Um, yeah, so you can see, um, you know, from this kind of like uh, the idea of two uh, dining tables, and then the skills of it and how we kind of like plans to have all the packaging project uh, objects around it you know it's like a delectable dishes so from there kind of give us uh, the idea to um, you know uh, you kind of recreate these kind of like uh, dishes around the table as a typographic forms for the identity of the exhibition as well so that kind of like the, the, the exhibition design the space itself echo with, with kind of with, with the branding itself usually as well so there's this cohesive language all around so um that's kind of like anchor the whole uh branding branding look of it so from there um you know the whole series of uh the applications and 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 all the collaterals are, are, are following the same visual language. And, you know, these are some of the thoughts and ideas that we have for the promotions. Uh, and I, I guess one of the main things when we, when we kind of like thinking about the, the visual graphics in the space itself as well is that we actually wanted to kind of like, because all these objects are, are, are like, hundreds of it, like all these stunning projects all around. So we wanted to kind of like the space decals to have a huge contrast as well. So we actually have this huge, uh, you know, the, the, the whole branding kind of flow from the table to the floor to the wall as well. Yeah, so it created kind of like a, a nice contrast of the space, the typography versus the size of the objects all around it. So we actually, uh, uh, welcome you to come and experience <laughs> it. It's, it's hard to kind of show this on the visual as well. So for, for this as well, uh, we kind of like when we talk about uh, how do we, how do we have a catalog or you know, a brochure to kind of take away. So we also thought of like, since it's a packaging kind of uh, exhibition, so we wanted to take away to have this, you know, feeling like you are taking a packaging home as well. So we have this uh, little cube that, uh, that kind of sell ensemble from a, a poster that's two-sided that you can actually fold into a cube. So, um, yeah, we have this. 
So we have a limited quantity, so uh, it's a first come first serve basis. So uh, painstakingly yeah. folded by Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, painstakingly folded by everybody uh, who is working on this exhibition. So we hope you kind of like uh, you know drop by when you're free and really enjoys all the exhibited work here, which is uh, absolutely high high quality. Yeah. yeah. I think that's all for yeah, us, right? That, that's all for us. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Charlotte. Thank you. Next up, we will move on to the panel discussion and Q&A portion of today's segment. Henry, over to you. Okay. Everybody, how are you? Thank you for my guest designers give us such an inspiring presentation today. Uh, my name is Henry. I'm the creator of this Hungry Design Show, uh, founder of the Top Awards Asia, and I live in Tokyo for 25 years. Uh, since 2016, I follow my passion of packaging design and started the Invitation Only Packaging Design Award for Asian market. During these five years, uh, Top Award has been awarded over 500 great packaging design around the world, around Asia, and I can't wait to share this great work for all of you. So under the theme of March Emotion, Emotive by Design uh, Singapore Council, we select more than 100 pieces of food and beverage related products and created a title called uh, Hungry Design to inspire people to think how packaging design that somehow evokes our emotion and our daily life. And also you can see the exhibition right now is so, so wonderful. So actually the show was scheduled last year on March, 2020, but under the COVID issue, we were suggest to postpone this show for a year until today. So I'm proud, so proud that Singapore people can build up a good record to control COVID. And under this issue, uh, people's lifestyle change a lot as well. We are crossing over a period of so-called new standard around us. At the same time, establishing a different point of view to our shopping style as well. So one of the obvious changes is speeding up the e-commerce development, development. So because of COVID, we are, free, we are freely to go supermarket picks and grab products on the shelves, uh, enjoying our five senses shopping experience. But nowadays, under the limit of people con contact, consumers are willing to stay at home, online shopping on their tiny smartphone screen instead of going out. So under this situation, Packaging design works a very important communication tool between makers and consumer. And also Singapore people are so lucky this time because you can touch and feel all the products in the exhibition. But remember to put it back uh, to the same spot. Thank you very much. So moreover, the sustainability is also a rising topic that are fighting for, the, for right now. So uh, in this Hungry Design Show, uh, thank you, uh, Syed uh, and uh, Jonathan created such a good uh, sustainability concept for the show and make the balance between uh, design and uh, the environment. So I am uh, proudly can invite six iconic designers to share their opinion today. So let us ask them uh, some questions. Uh, make people to to feel their hunger okay so uh jo jo uh Joshua, are you here yes me okay so can i ask you the first question yes please okay uh you create a very stylish design for the marvel chocolate and matcha which is Tea, uh, green tea packaging. So what kind of marketing strategy will lead this sophisticated food product success? Ah, um, it's an interesting question. I think um, in the case of the, of the chocolate, it was, um, there was a lot of delight and surprise uh, inherent in this product. It was a new kind of product from from Vietnam and um, honestly it was a lot of risk taking from the founders of the company and their investors uh, but everyone really uh, believed that um, the best 
uh, option was to be very honest about what this product was all about and to bring this um, into the market and, and, and allow people to experience it and be curious about it. Um, uh, one of the, the risks that the founders took uh, which was very much encouraged by us was to release um, six different products that come from, it's, it's basically all the same product. It's dark chocolate, but it comes from six different provinces of Southern Vietnam. And because of the terroir and the, the way that the farmers work the land, uh, each of these chocolates tasted differently. And I think this was like, in, in those days, this was 10 years back, we wouldn't have really called that a marketing strategy. We would have called that following our instincts and just believing in the fact that people would want to take part in this story and, 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 and surely it was a big success. Um, you've also asked about material matcha uji. I, I think that that was quite calculated in that um, matcha is a, obviously a revered, um, cherished, very um, historic product of Japan. And it was sort of the ambition of, of these founders to um, almost disrupt that, um, almost to challenge that. And in a way that in our research of the, the tea ceremony, which was originally kind of a very, um, there, were tea, there were tea ceremony that were quite elaborate and, 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 and very posh in this, this revolution to make it more simplistic and more like we experience it today. That was disruptive to the culture of tea in Japan at that time and disruptive. And that was inspirational, sort of a, a bit of a punk revolution uh, on, on, on matcha. So we kind of got into that and uh, believed that that would be a compelling way to talk about matcha, which is uh, not so much about tradition but more about just that incredible ingredient which is the inspiration for the tradition in the first place. Um, I hope that answers your question. I, I didn't go much into a marketing strategy but more this is a very great this is a very great answer. I think uh, it's a very unique uh, point of view to create a very new uh, a very old uh, things to the how to create a new market. I think uh, your 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 solution is very inspiring. So for the next question, I would like to ask uh, uh, SK uh, Tachikawa-san. Uh, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, I find your food packaging with a lot of delicious photos. So uh, why are you focused such a lot of uh, photo and ingredients on your packaging and uh, why do you think this is the best solution for your design? I see. Thank you for your question. Uh, I believe that the design and creativity is a little bit similar to the surviving of the environment in evolution, like features. Uh, and especially that uh, for focusing on quite competitive uh, market situations such as convenience stores or supermarket, uh, in that case that uh, yeah, many of the product is showing themselves. Uh, so quite, yeah, sometimes that uh, it's very uh, direct when, when you use the, the photo itself uh, for expressing the sizzle of the product. Uh, so basically that I believe uh, when I use the photos, then the, the, const, uh, the surroundings of the product is very tough in a way, uh, the environment itself is. I see, I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answer. So uh, the next question I, I would like to ask uh, uh, Eliko Kawakami-san. Kawakami-san, you Hey, Ah, uh, Okay, instead of food photos, you apply a lot of illustration and artistic element to decorate the packaging. Actually, it is quite hard to uh, for designer to present such a very new and uh, we so-called your hungry ideas to your uh, food related clients. How can you make it? Uh, 
聞こえますかはい、聞こえます。はい、大丈夫です。えっ、ー、と、うん、シスムではなくて、イラストとかパッケージのなんか、あのデザインエレメントは使ってなんかアーティストの,あの,あのエレメントを使って多いですからなんかどんなあの食品関係クライアントにプレゼンテーションしていますか、うんえっと、まず食品のパッケージだと、まあ、中,中に何が入っているかって分からないといけないところですよね。それで、えっと、その食品が表に写真があれば、おいしそうな写真があれば、機能としては多分十分に満たすと思うんですけど、先ほども話したこうデザインの中で大切にしていることと同じなんですけど、あのパッケージをその商品にたどり着くまでの一つのジャーニーのように考えていて、まあ、その道のりの中であの手に取った人がこう想像をかきたてられるような要素が、商品以外に、まあ、機能以上に必要だっていうふうに考えているっていうプレゼンをしていますね。なるほど。もしかあの、I see。Maybe、uh, this is、uh, you have a lot of、uh, products is related to dessert and、uh, like、uh, bakery things. This is、uh, more to be、uh, for our For st more stylish fashion way to present. もしかしたら多分あの結構おしゃれなあのディサートとかあのあのベイクリーのものいっぱいあのディザインあるからだからこういう方向はすごくよくできてるんですね。Okay, so for the next question, uh, uh, is、uh, Shun Kawakami さんいますか is, 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 Are you here? Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Okay, good.、Uh, you are very easy to tell that you are very hungry because、uh, the reason is、uh, I can see you have a variety of projects. Yes,、uh, from interior packaging, cafe. And also,、yeah. uh, besides your packaging design, you've done a lot of restaurants and even you create your cafe shop next to your studio. So, <laughs>、yeah. uh, I have two questions. One is、yeah. uh, where is the design inspiration c o m e from? And、uh, mm -hmm. what is your point of view according to food and space relationship?、Mm. Food and space relationship. All right. So, now I'm, I'm living in、uh, Tokyo and also、mm -hmm. Karuizawa. You know Karuizawa, right? Yes, Karuizawa yes, Karuizawa, yes. You know, yes, it's a、nature. resort like a resort,、uh, like a Bali, right? That's, that's right, that's right. So,、uh, kind of a Swiss or some, somewhere. And,、uh, yeah. So, Tokyo is very modern and、uh, trend, and you know, it's business building and、mm -hmm. it's very quick. And Karuizawa is in the nature, in the forest. So, I can feel more uh, uh, nature. So,、mm -hmm. I could get so many i n s p i r a t i o n from city and the nature, you know.、Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now in my, I'm living in the half and a half.、Um, four days in city, three days、oh. in Karizawa, three days in forest, you know. So,、okay. so now I, I could understand about sustainability, why we need, you know what I mean? I see. I see. Yeah. So, I see. so now、um, I'm so much, so much inspiration coming from forest and the nature. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of everybody say SDGs or something, you know, sustainability.、Um, mm -hmm. So I'm trying now, I'm trying to、um, design for design by sustainability approach and ESCAL approach. So using sustainability material and paper,、mm -hmm. uh, don't want to food loss and you know,、mm -hmm. uh, animal protect. And I'm thinking about the background of design, all right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's my、um, inspiration coming from. You, you so, bring up a very, very good point is、uh, not only we do research sustainability in front of the、yeah. computer, but you have、yeah. to feel、yeah. the real、uh, nature. Yeah. Yes, yeah. this is very good.、Yeah. Okay. And you know, I'm, I'm born in Tokyo and、mm -hmm. growing up in Shibuya. So,、mm -hmm. so much Tokyo boy, you know, I am.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> so,、okay. I'm so inspired from nature.、Uh, yeah. So, and also、uh, space and food. Um, uh, 
I'm thinking about everything um, as design, what should I say? Uh, everything, I want to um, organize everything, you know, in design category. So I'm trying to space design, you know, architect interior design. Also, I'm art like di art direction and design direction. Uh, it's kind of collaboration, collaborating with uh, architecture and interior designer for restaurant, for shop, for uh, space. So, and also we design packaging and, you know, food packaging or something. So I'm trying to combine the one uh, atmosphere for brand. So space design and also package design um, have to meet same atmosphere. So that's branding. It's my philosophy. Okay. Thank you for your <laughs> thank you for your, <laughs> yes, very great answer. It's very inspiring. And uh, actually, uh, can I ask us, uh, Silvio? Are you here, Silvio? Hi. Selvio? Yes. I'm yes. Here. Yes, actually, you have uh, you are uh, very similar to uh, uh, Kawakami-san, Shun Kawakami, because uh, both of you do. Of course, you do mainly is the space project, uh, interior project. And uh, actually, I want to ask you: is uh, 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 it's very inspiring from your uh, ESOP uh, uh, project? Actually, it's a worldwide uh, iconic skincare shop. Everybody knows. So is there any difference when you design for Singapore market? Can we share some of the uh, difficulties or some of the point of view uh, for us? Um, I think for ESO, uh, thank you for the question. For ESO itself, uh, what is interesting is that every store is unique. Every store tells a local story. Every store tries mm -hmm. to be the local store. And um, which is why when we shared about the projects, the starting point was always about the location and mm -hmm. uh, how to be inspired by the history or mm -hmm. the culture of the location itself. So the Singapore stores tells the Singapore story, mm -hmm. uh, which is very different from other stores around the world. So mm -hmm. I, I think there's a very strong starting point as a brand in how mm -hmm. it lands in the location itself. So I think mm -hmm. that's a, a very good starting point for us as designers as well, because then we can really uncover uh, stories mm -hmm. and uh, emotional mm -hmm aspect mm. about that location and uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that's, a, that's, that's something quite nice about the brand mm -hmm. i see i see i see thank you very much thank you very much and uh jonathan are you here yes okay so uh my question is uh, uh, uh because uh, you know uh, singapore is a food paradise for mm. Uh, every, as everyone knows, and with multicultural gourmet. And uh, for me, under this kind of multicultural, uh, what is the difficulty uh, when you design an um, FMB design for Singapore or around the Southeast Asia area? Especially, uh, you talk about the Otai. Uh, otai is a very traditional um, uh, food but you use a very contemporary packaging. So can you tell us more about this one, this uh, question? Yeah. Um, for me, um, I always find that the, when, when, when it comes to kind of like, um, um, like doing brandings or even packaging designs or, or any forms of designs for these kind of uh, traditional foods and, and any kinds of uh, you know foods in Asia, it's like how much we are able to you know capture the original spirits and how much we are able to kind of elevate it. So yeah, it's always these creative tensions that our feels make or break the 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 the, the creative process. So for Ota itself, um, I I actually trying to kind of like look at it from a modern point of view, like how much I understand Ota, and then from this context. I will try to tell their story through a more modern kind of eye of view. So hopefully with that, I'm able to communicate to a newer generation of people, uh, consumers and also kind of communicate to other people who doesn't know what OTA is, but able to kind of like uh, understand and first expose and get fall in love with it in a more contemporary kind of sensitivity, uh, sensibility. So um, yeah, I, I think 
that will be my my kind of a creative process and you know hopefully it's something that is kind of you know, workable yeah okay so, i see okay mm -hmm. i see i see thank you thank you very much actually we got a, a few question from the uh, audience and uh, uh, this question is uh, uh, jo Joshua. Joshua, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, actually, the audience want to ask is uh, how much time do you spend on research before start starting a conceptualization work? Any advice on approaching this? Uh, we spend quite a lot of time on research. If, um... <clears throat> If we're working with a client um, outside of Vietnam, we will go and um, do our research in, in person. Um, most often we're working on projects now in Vietnam and we will conduct um, often a workshop in the beginning, getting um, all the stakeholders together, asking some um, very careful questions that we've you know, really crafted and developed over the past 10 years. Um, we use uh, questionnaires, interviews, trips. We, we want to get to know as much as we possibly can um, about the task and about how we can um, help our clients solve the problem. Um, and of course, when we're working, there's also just a lot of inspiration that can come in, in, in many different ways. Uh, we might spend up to a month on research in our, in our projects. Uh, it depends. Um, it depends on the task. But uh, research and strategic work is definitely the bulk of the, of the process. And I think in our experience, doing that um, diligently and doing that very well kind of leads us to more um, efficient design uh, discovery process where we might end up just presenting one solution to our clients because they've been with us the whole way through. We've been kind of solving problems together and connecting the dots. And by the time we actually present design, it's almost, they kind of say it before we even say it sometimes. So research is very, very, very important and it just solves so much guessing. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answer. And uh, Shun Kawakami-san, are you here? Hi. Oh, can, uh, can I ask you a question? Is uh, The audience want to ask is, uh, you are very fo uh, focused about sustainability. So creating an experience through packaging and sustainability and reducing waste can we truly find a balance between both? Um, it's, it's, my, my thinking is very simple. Um, uh, you know, my design, my designs um, don't want to be garbage. Mm. You know, um, that's it, almost that's it. Because, um, I believe design could make um, creating uh, sustainable uh, business and culture and this. Um, so I don't want to make garbage. It's sometimes too much packaging. Um, I shall say uh, too too much luxury packaging. Uh, sometimes we don't need uh, brand and enough. Uh, Brand and business needs more thinking about uh, for the future and for the uh, world better. So it actually, it's very simple. Um, uh, actually, clients have to think about uh, next year and the future for uh, for as I say. Magonotame, uh, uh, for, for next for next generation. 
。うん、ネクストジェネレーション。なんか孫のためっていうと分かりやすいと思う。<笑>うん、OK。You, you, you're very concerned about the next generation in the, in,、right? in the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.、Uh, thank so thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, SK, SK Tachikawa san, can you ask you a question? Yes, please.、Uh, the question the audience w a n t to ask you、uh, can you talk more about the, the, your, the most struggling project? That means the most difficult the, the project you are struggling. Komaru, Komaru no project t o Ichiban、uh... Komaru no project t o Which one is your Ichiban Komaru project? Which one is your most struggling project? And how did you? And your team solved the problem.、Uh, okay, uh, so uh, what you are asking is the past project from our.、Uh, yes, our your past project. Just select one of it, the most、okay. difficult.、Uh, the, the most difficult project, what I experienced is the, the strategy for the final disposal site of the nuclear garbage. Uh, okay. okay. And making the strategy of it. And what we proposed it is actually there are many of opposed people who are, of course,、uh, actually, that the, you know, that Japan is the second country actually、uh, experienced the, uh, the uh, meltdown of the、mm. nuclear、uh, plant. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, that many people opposing it. But,、uh, mm. but you know, that the There should be、mm. the final disposal site. So,、uh, what we propose is for separating the strategy、uh, from,、mm -hmm. from the generating the electricity from that、uh, mm -hmm. and the strategy for final disposal site because the time frame is so, so different. And、mm -hmm. also, that,、uh, what we propose is、uh, with, with separating it. Uh, mm. For, yeah, as along the, along the te te tethers of sustainability,、uh, mm -hmm. we set the concept of the, that side to,、mm. to focusing on the next generation of,、uh, mm. next genera uh, next generation of sustainable,、uh, sustainable mm. plant and also mm. The, the areas、uh, mm. with developing the world's largest Geiger counters with,、mm. uh, with one kilometer, one kilometer size with,、mm. <laughs> with the, uh, the, uh, the uh, mega solar. <laughs> so that is a kind of that is a kind of hardest and also the kind of invisible projects, but we、mm. really,、uh, we really did. But、uh, the almost the, the every project is the same. Like、mm. yeah,、uh, there are there's many of the struggles, and as、mm. Shun have said that、uh, for for thinking about、uh, for yeah with with such struggling、uh, hard situation, actually.、Mm. Uh, actually, on the contrary, uh,、mm. we, uh, we, I mean, that the cre creatives had、mm. the chance for、mm. flipping,、uh, mm. flipping, flipping the situation upside down.、Mm. Uh, if, mm. if the idea is right in a way. Mm. Uh, so, mm, so, actually, the, the hardest project、mm. can be the most,、uh, most exciting project. Mm, I see. I see. I, under, I, I, I start to can vision、uh, how, hungry, how hungry are you <laughs> for, your, <laughs> for the new thing. Okay, I'm, the time is running out, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming for the last question. Uh, uh, Selvi, are you, are you here? Hi, hi. Yes, my mom. Okay,、uh, this is a question from the audience. It's a very, very good question. Uh, can you briefly explain how do you explore your materials? Can you explain your train of thoughts of how you can use such a common material for something so luxurious? When do you know where to stop? This is a very interesting question.、Oh. <laughs> I, I don't think there's a very clear cut answer to it, it's to keep an open mind. I think the, start, the starting research that、uh, Joshua talked about allows us to probe different types of the starting point. It also allows us to、uh, understand how we can approach every design brief. The materials might be different, the possibilities might be different, but the options are there. 
And it's also about constantly keeping an open mind to what is possible with very simple things. And that's something that uh, I think we are quite quite keen on. I think materials have got um, material properties as well. There is a limit to what you can do. And sometimes it's about almost stress testing it. Right? Mm -hmm. What are the opportunity that it inherently has? Mm -hmm. So there would define a certain kind of uh, possibilities in it. Mm -hmm. Knowing when to stop is something that um, I think is always a challenge because mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I think as I mentioned earlier, there is a limit to what you can do. Mm -hmm. There is also a desire to push it further. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I think with all design, it's always mm -hmm. about that balance between when is right mm. and often we ask ourselves or at least i do ask myself this, this question whether the design is right for the space because we mm. often operate in the realm of uh, the, the space itself and mm. uh, um, yeah so I, I don't think there's a kind of hard and fast uh, way of knowing when to stop but you kind of know when is wrong or when is right yeah. this is a very good answer like uh, the, the hunger what are you hungry for? So actually, everybody hunger cannot stop. You will not say tomorrow I'm not hungry again. So every day <laughs> you are hungry, keep hungry. So actually it's very similar, our hunger is very similar to design. So right. actually it's kind of like a motivation for us to find more, explore more, to know more. So, uh, so thank you very much for six of you taking such a variable time today and sharing such a good with a very, very uh, inspiring contents. And also, uh, especially, especially thank you, Jonathan and Saivu, uh, help us to establish such a beautiful uh, exhibition uh, behind you. I'm, I'm um, uh, because the coffee, I cannot fly to Singapore to visit such a beautiful uh, event. I hope you can take more photo for us. And I really, really recommend Singapore people uh, with, uh, to, to take a look of uh, these hundred, more than hundred products and ask yourself, what uh, am I hungry for? So I think it is a very good question like uh, Cyril said, don't stop your hunger, appetite. No one stop your appetite. Just go forward and explore more. Okay, today, thank you so much for everybody. I think uh, the time is over, but uh, it is worth to take to over the time because uh, the content is very interesting. So uh, stay, stay strong and safe, everybody. Okay, so thank you so much for your join. Uh, and uh, yes, okay. I hope look forward to have a project with all of you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Okay. Yes. Shall okay. uh, your turn. Thank you, Henry, all our panelists, and every one of you who have joined us today. If you do not already know, the Hungry Design Exhibit opens today and will be ongoing till the 31st of March. As Jonathan and Selwyn mentioned, this exhibition showcases more than 100 unique food packaging designs from Top Awards Asia's spectrum of winners. Visitors will get a glimpse into the world of food and beverage packaging through outstanding examples from around Asia. Each of them has a deli delicatable taste and a great story to tell. You can scan the QR code on the top right corner to find out more. It is open daily from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the National Design Centre Atrium, Level 1. We have come to the end of our session and we would appreciate if you could take some time to share your feedback through a quick survey by scanning the QR code on the left. A link to the survey can also be found in the Zoom chat. Please let us know what type of future programs you'd be interested to see from the National Design Centre. Lastly, if you would like to find out more about the upcoming programs the National Design Centre has lined up under the March thematic of emotive design, do scan the QR code you see on the right. Thank you once again for spending time with us, and we hope to see you at our future events. Goodbye.